answer me this. Do you think Terry Maitland killed that boy? If he didn't do it, someone else did. Someone else did. Someone else did. Jessa. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Rob here at Smirking Gun Reviews, and tonight uh, we are going to be talking about HBO's new crime drama based on the Stephen King story called The Outsider. Now, there will be spoilers in this video, but not until later. Okay, we're going to get to how I actually feel about these first two episodes of the show, explain kind of why I'm doing this, and my general feelings about these two episodes and whether or not it's worth your time to check out but we will be getting into it because in the end these videos are for people who want to talk about it want to hear about what people think about watching these two episodes so just be warned and I'll let you guys know when we will be talking specifics about this show which long and short of it really simply I'm riveted I'm in all the way uh, I I am not a big fan of police procedurals. I've seen too many of them, uh, and uh, most of them don't really stand out to me. Uh, there's too many CSIs and uh, Law and Orders and Chicago whatever. <laughs> Just, it's one of the most popular genres. It's one of the most popular genres for a reason. People like episodic stuff. I, I don't. Not anymore. I don't know if I ever really did. If that's your thing, great. Uh, this, on the other hand, what I love about this is it, you know, and, and things like True Detective, uh, Crime Story that I'm re I have been reviewing on my channel. I like things that have a through line, a actual story to follow, a beginning, a middle, and an end that you can get to. Sometimes it doesn't satisfy. Sometimes these kind of things don't always pan out. But I do respect the journey. And I wasn't 100% sure I was going to be even talking about this show because I didn't know if it would really be anything special. Well, I'm here to tell you that, at least for me, this is something special. Uh, maybe you don't like Jason Bateman. I'm sure that there are people that find Jason Bateman to be, you know, not, they don't, not, not your cup of tea. I've been all in on Jason Bateman since fucking Silver Spoons, okay? And the very few minor missteps that actor has had, uh, I, 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 I just kind of toss aside. Every actor makes, uh, you know, a bad movie most of the time. Um, but one thing that I will argue is that as a director, Jason Bateman is phenomenal. He has really cut his teeth on the show Ozark that he's also in. If you have not seen Ozark, I highly, I can't, I can't tell you how much you should be watching Ozark. The third season comes out this year. You can binge it or watch it at your leisure. I, I prefer leisurely these days. Uh, definitely check out Ozark. His uh, directing in that show is fantastic. And that was one of the biggest draws here. More than just saying, okay, it's another great kind of... Uh, different kind of procedural that HBO does with shows like True Detective Season 1 and 3 particularly. Also with crime shows like The Wire, and that ties into this as well. Um, this is of that vein with the Stephen King twist. Um, I was riveted through the first two episodes like completely. Especially the first episode and about a third of the way in <laughs> to the second episode. I was really I I was on edge. I was, and then I continued to be on edge as the second episode ended. And I really can't wait to continue talking about this show as it goes on. Um, but Jason Bateman's direction was one of the biggest draws for me. Uh, Bateman being in this, Ben Mendelsohn, who is one of the premier actors of the last ten years, ever since uh, Bloodline on Netflix, even in movies like Rogue One, He's really great. I did not like 
uh, Ready Player One, but he was chewing scenery brilliantly in that movie as well. He is just a top-notch actor, and it's nice to see him in a role where he's actually a good guy <laughs> for a change, or, or not a rogue or a guy with a mystery or a past. He's just a guy. He's got a little bit of a complicated history with, a, 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 a spoiler alert on this, he, he's a character who lost a child. Uh, we got the great Julianne Nicholson's in this. Uh, Bill Camp. Love freaking Bill Camp. Uh, we got uh, Mayor Winningham is in this. Uh, Hitian Park from Hannibal's on this. Uh, Oh, God, uh, the guy from Ozark, uh, I wrote his name down, too. Uh, geez, the names are all over the place here. Um, oh, there's Cynthia Erivo. She's not in either of these episodes. She was in uh, Bad Times at, at the El Royale. She's in this as well. Um, i got to find this guy's name. Because I literally was writing my notes kind of all over the place. Um, Mark Menchaca was also in this uh, in the first two episodes, well, the second episode. He was uh, one of the characters on Ozark Season 1. Uh, so, great cast. Great cast. Uh, also, I never read the Stephen King book. Uh, I'm, I've become less of a book reader these days, and it's a damn shame, actually. But the way it helps is that when everything's getting adapted these days, I don't have to say, well, it was better than the book, or I have all these preconceived notions of what it's supposed to be like. I also find that the best Stephen King adaptations are things with just the bouquet of uh, paranormal or supernatural or horror in it. Uh, the best Stephen King adaptations usually de deal with things that do happen. Uh, Shawshank Redemption being like probably the best of all of them might be one of the. It's my one of my favorite movies of all time. And in this, it feels like that kind of grounded story with just that kind of extra mystery that drives that's behind all of this that makes you know can leave you staying behind to watch the mystery unfold um what else do we have to talk about before we get to it um <laughs> this story is about a man played by jason bateman named terry mayfield or maitland sorry terry maitland who's arrested for the murder of a child and believe me when I tell you that this murder is beyond brutal. They don't show it, but you, for squeamish people uh, that have not seen this episode at the beginning, uh, they do show the body of the, the, the child, and it's, it's hard to look at. Um, and how he's brought in by Ralph Mendel, uh, Ben Mendelssohn's character, Ralph. And it's a small town kind of community. Uh, think like if you liked uh, that one that show with uh, like Sharp Objects with Amy Adams, that kind of small town mentality. Uh, you know, everybody knows each other. Everybody, you know, so when you bring in a Terry Maitland, this is huge. And it's basically how everybody thinks this, the, the, there is overwhelming evidence. And they kind of show this in the trailer uh, that this guy did it. And you can also tell by the trailer that there's a question of a lot of evidence proving the opposite. And that's kind of where the jumping off point is. Uh, I can tell you that the music in this is fantastic. It sets a tone it throughout. It's one of the things that kept... It's got this eerie somberness to it that never lets you feel uh, very settled. It makes you kind of on edge. Uh, also, the lack of music at times is fantastic. Uh, the fact, oh, one other thing is this show doesn't always hold your hand. It's a little non-linear. There were a few things that I actually had to work out for myself um, because they don't just flat out tell you things right away. You just kind of go, oh, I think this is how, this is what happened. Something like this, you know what I mean? There are events that I had to go, wait, is this, did that just happen? Is what I think, like, what they're talking about right now, is this about, like, oh my god. Like, I was having all these kind of reactions like that. So now let's, we're going to get into spoilers. So if you guys uh, have already reached this point and you haven't watched the episodes, go watch this show. It's fantastic. Uh, it stands out above anything I've seen so far this year, even though we're only 12 days in. But uh, <laughs> as far as I can tell right now, this is... 
the show to watch if you have HBO. Um, great acting, great directing, great score. Uh, it for a show that is a, a about a mystery, it clips along, it keeps your attention, uh, and. For all of you that will just say it's boring, I say you watch too many regular uh, TV shows like that have to keep the things moving. we got to roll out the criminals. we got to have the answers quick. This is going to be a slow burn where the mystery is revealed. If anything that I would have to say negative about it is the possibility that a lot of these shows' mysteries tend to be things that you can either see coming a mile away or end up being very much kind of a letdown. Uh, very few times are we ever given anything these days, I feel like, that really, at least for me, kind of shocked me, that take me back and go, oh, that's what was going on? That's the only thing that I worry about going into any of these kind of mystery shows. So, with that being said, definitely going forward, spoilers from here on out. So, one of the driving forces in this episode and why I, I was so on edge is because I do really like Jason Bateman uh, as an actor. And most of his characters, as sarcastic and smug as they can be, sometimes, I've, <laughs> I've always loved him. And the thought that his character might have done this, especially when throughout most of the episode, uh, a big chunk of this first episode is them presenting pretty much irrefutable evidence that he is the murderer of this child. And when you think Jason Bateman and, and you think of the crime that's been committed, it's fucking horrifying to think that this character, this actor, could do that, that they, he would portray it. <laughs> and there are moments in this episode where you go, if this is true, he is truly a hideous monster. But at the same time, you know, after seeing the trailer, I know that there's evidence that support that he wasn't there. I was worried that we might be getting into doppelganger territory. And I'm not entirely unconvinced that we're not dealing with alternate realities or people from alternate realities. I've seen too many shows like Fringe where people cross over. Uh, even shows like uh, that were just on, like His Dark Materials, deal with people that can cross between worlds. I, wa I am still a little concerned that maybe we're going into that territory. I don't know. Even in Stephen King books, there are people that can come in and out of different worlds, like the Dark Tower series. So I was worried that maybe we're headed into that kind of territory. But only two episodes in, and they don't really explain anything. They just kind of leave... It, it feels more true detective than Dark Tower kind of things. Um, the acting in this, uh, in the dialogue, especially the dialogue. I, f I forgot to mention Richard Price, who is doing the writing in this. If you don't know who Richard Price is... <sighs> Uh, again, I'm going to turn in one of those people. Well, then you've never seen The Wire. Uh, <laughs> who, uh, Richard Price's uh, gift at specific and detailed and realistic dialogue, especially in crime stories, is very, 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 very good. Um, there are very few people out there, I think, that write in the style that Richard Price does as far as crime stories. He also did uh, the, the screenplay in the book, I believe of one of my favorite uh, Spike Lee movies, Clackers. Um, so all the dialogue in this, it feels authentic. Everybody's speaking in ways that they, you would feel like they would talk in situations like this, whether you were the victim, like the victim's family, the cops, or the you know people being charged with these things, or the family of those people. Everybody feels authentic and real. And it can make it a little bit uncomfortable. Thankfully, since these are kind of recognizable people that you've seen in other things, it makes it a little bit easier uh, to listen to. But there are times, though, in the <laughs> when they're talking about things or they show us certain things uh, that are just very unsettling. There's a specific scene, specifically, uh, with Bateman where he's in a certain state in front of a child that is very, very unsettling. It does. It makes you go, oh God! If this is true, like I said, this is—he's a monster. And there are certain things happening here, like his character being very stupid about after the crime, and how you you have to rationalize the the fact that this guy is playing very straight that he's not a killer, but the evidence makes him look like 
He's an obvious killer, a killer that wants to be caught. It's very, very, like a lot of contradictions uh, that are put in front of us here that make you go, okay, what is really going on? Um, that even the cops don't buy it, which is, again, I love that none of these people are one dimensional. Even when they want to just convict this guy, they, you know, they don't just want to ignore evidence. There were times in here where I thought that the characters were going to do bad things to, you know, to, for their own interests, uh, that they don't. Uh, that was very refreshing. You know, you see this happen a lot in right other shows where they make it more soap opery, where people do things that real people don't really do. Uh, and in this, it's just, it was so nice to see, like, there's a scene, the scene where he goes to the gift shop and gets the book. I was like, oh God, he's going to take, he's going to buy that book and he's going to hide the evidence. And it's, it, it, the reason I think like that is because I've seen too many things where they, the person has an agenda, the character has an agenda that doesn't fit the storyline, but he does it. He takes it and in, he puts it into evidence, whether he likes it or not, whether he finds out that the guy, that Terry Maitland did it or not. I just kept going, oh my God, thank God this show is not like these other shows where they, you know, they have to make the characters, uh, you know, uh, behave uh, in ways that only people fantasize about. You know, like, if this was me, man, I'd take that evidence and I'd burn it. Or if this was me, man, I'd lie in front of everybody to get what I want. They don't do that here. This show also specifically goes through the horror that horror that everyone experiences in this. Um, there is the supernatural element, but you know you can only call it supernatural because it, it, there's no other. You know, it, I'm not going to call it supernatural yet. I guess there's a person in a hoodie that appears to be disfigured. There is a that a uh, Terry Maitland's uh, daughter sees that no one else sees. Uh, there's marks left on the floor when that where that person supposedly was, and they could just be there and not be there. Um, and in this these first two episodes, it's like the tragedies are really just the beginning of the mystery. The why did this happen uh, is is really the big mystery because. You know, and again, like I said, spoilers. I'm talking to the people that have seen this episode, both episodes. Um, basically, the entire family of this, that starting with the the child that's murdered, they're all dead, basically, or almost dead. The father hangs himself, and he's basically brain dead. Terry Maitland is Jason Bateman's character is killed at the beginning of the second episode. I didn't even know he died. I couldn't even tell that he died. I actually, I kept going, is he dead? They're kind of talking about him like he's dead. He's killed by the older brother of the murdered child. And the, the murdered child is killed in turn by Ralph, played by Ben Mendelsohn. And I don't know what happened to the mother. She appeared to go insane in a scene that was really sad, where she's taking the baseball bat and bashing apart everything. I don't know if they said this and I missed it, that maybe she killed herself too. I don't know, but she... They say the whole family is basically gone. Like, there's nobody left to, for, to even get justice for. And that's when I realized, oh God, Terry Maitland's dead too. That scene where he's uh, holding his throat, they made it sound like he was going to survive it. And so when he tells Ben Mendelsohn, you know, like, Ralph, like, I didn't do it. I didn't realize these were going to be his last words. Um, and that's when we first see the guy in the hoodie. And the guy in the hoodie shows up at the, the when the father tries to hang himself. So this person's just kind of hanging out. And it just, those are the whys. Like, who is this? Why is this? Those are things that they're going to dole out uh, as the show goes on. Um, what else do we have here? Oh, there's a lot. Uh, when... He dies. Before he dies, the scene where Bateman uh, tells Ralph the story about, uh, he's like, you asked me if I touched your kid. And uh, that scene blew me away. Because I love that Mendelssohn's subduedness, but also ready to strike out, was fantastic. Of the, Be careful what you're about to say to me. And, and Bateman telling the story of how your son was this 
little guy with big heart that kept striking out and then I taught him to bunt and we had the whole push it thing and this just it was so powerful and so emotional and when he says you know you asked me if I touched your kid I hope I did and meaning knowing what that really meant that I that meant that I helped your child and I, I would never hurt him it, it, it was a standout scene uh, that made it even harder to realize that you know with the evidence that we see right that somebody who looks like Terry Maitland killed this child with his fingerprints that put his DNA there makes all of this even worse because somebody did it. Somebody that can look just like him. Which is why I was worried we're going into doppelganger territory. Um, or alternate reality, you know, or side-by-side -side worlds, if you will, you know, uh, territory. Um, I did also like there's the line that, that sometimes there's just basically Roanokes. That there's sometimes there are mysteries uh, with no answers that we really just, we, we can't know. We won't know. Certain things happen and we just will never know why they happen. That's another thing I'm a little worried about. Like that might be a little bit too much foreshadowiness of like maybe this show is going to leave us hanging with really no answer. I'm a little worried about that. Um... I did really like the decoding the three cars ago scene as well. Them trying to piece together what three cars ago means and how they go backwards in time for this kid who can't recall dates or times right now. That was very cool where they finally put it together about Ash Wednesday. Freaking fantastic. Also, Daddy got cut by a male nurse is something else that I think is going to be played into as well. And in the end, there's bloody clothes in a barn. We don't know how they got there. He changed clothes in the bathroom of the bar. Then he left. And then he changed clothes again. But the belt buckle clothes are there. And they're messed up. More questions. Um, and then the... Uh, the last bit of things here, I, I, I wrote down things that are all kind of all over the place. <laughs> um, no, I think that's about it. I'm going to be kicking myself if I can't remember anything else. But, oh, Daddy, is this really, really good. And I can't say enough good things about this so far. Besides, like I said, performances, directing, tone, pacing, the music. I think I said music twice already. So... It's been a long day, and I haven't made a video in a while. So I'm just kind of getting back to trying to get back to the way I used to do things and, and trying to get back to actually the way I really used to do things. And so hopefully this is a step in the right direction. I apologize if I'm a little scattered, but like I said, I haven't made a video in about two weeks except for my 1917 video. And other than that, I've been doing game streams. So if you did like this review, please hit the like button, comment, share, subscribe, hit the bell for all notifications. Otherwise, this is Rob at Smirking at Reviews saying you can find me on Twitter at Reviews underscore gun. And we will see you next week for more of The Outsider.